Claire Polkinghorne, welcome to 7.30. Thank you very much for having me. Now, I'm, I'm talking to you in, in Sweden, where you play in a very competitive league. But what is the difference between um, league soccer and a national, uh, an international competition like the World Cup? Uh, yeah, obviously, there's a, a massive difference. You've got um, the best players from all over the country playing for their respective countries, um, obviously, to, to win their ultimate prize. And it's, it's definitely a, a step up in... Um, from club football um, in every part of the game. It's more intense, it's faster, it's higher pace, better tactical um, awareness from teams. So, yeah, there's definitely a big difference. And, um, yeah, looking really looking forward to, to stepping out with Matildas later this year. Do you enjoy that step up in intensity and the demand for higher skill that, that comes with it? Yeah, I do. I love it. Um, you know, I love representing the Matildas and, and playing for my country and, and testing myself against the uh, best players in the world. And there's going to be more of that to come, which is really exciting. Now, you have had an extraordinary career with the Matildas. You're a two-time Olympian. You're Australia's most capped player. You've played more than 150 games for the Matildas. I just want you to take us back for our audience. Do you remember much about the very first time you put on the Matildas jersey? I don't remember too many specifics, um, but I remember we were in China playing a friendly game um, and I think we got a red card or something happened in the game and I needed to come on um, and I actually played as a striker. I'm a defender now. Um, so it was something that was well out of my depth coming on as a striker, but um, yeah, that was a very proud moment for myself and my family to to make my debut for the Matildas. Um, and yeah, it's it's been one hell of a journey, that's for sure. It is an extraordinary thing, actually. You mentioned that you debuted as a as a striker, and although you are a defender now, you have retained that versatility around the field. It's an unusual thing at, at your level of soccer, isn't it? Yeah, probably not so much recently. In the last few years, I've um, definitely stayed as a as a defender, but. Yeah, throughout my career, I have found myself in different positions, which probably um, gave me a little bit of a, an edge against other players. Um, I've found myself in midfield uh, at the wing back position. Um, so, yeah, I, I've definitely played a few different positions in, in my career, but definitely found a home in, in the centre of defence. Now, you, um, you grew up playing sport with your family. I think your, your brother says that uh, you, as a family, you played just about every game under the sun. What is it that, in the end, made you choose soccer? Yeah, I'm not sure. I, um, yeah, growing up, me and my brothers were were very competitive, and we just loved being outside playing whatever sport it was. Um, so I always knew that I, I wanted to to be an athlete of some sort. Um, you know, I had that competitive drive um, and you know willingness to to work hard, and it was just a matter of which sport it was going to be in. And in the end, it probably was a decision between athletics and football, which I'd sort of been playing um, pretty consistently. And and I don't know, I just love the the team environment of the football and and, and challenging yourself. And I guess um, yeah, just having that camaraderie with with your teammates was something that really pushed football ahead of athletics for me. Now, um, you've seen women's football, obviously women's soccer, transform into the game that it is today. What did it mean to you and to your team members when the Matildas achieved equal pay in 2019? Yeah, it was massive for us, um, not only the, the current playing group, but I guess for the future of women's football in this country, just to, to reach that pay deal um, for us as, as players uh, was something that we'd been working towards for a long time. And I guess it was our responsibility to ensure that the next group of players coming through would have the same if not greater opportunities to to make football their career and I think um, you know that was a massive step in in reaching that milestone and and I think we we have sort of set up a path for the younger players coming through that they can choose football as um, as their career and and be able to focus all of their energy on to being the best footballers that they can be. You didn't just get equal pay in terms of recognition of the very high level of skill um, but it also changed changed your life in 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 as you're saying just there that for young players they'll be able to focus entirely on being elite, elite sportswomen women. I just want to take you back to and ask how difficult it was juggling the demands of elite sport um, while also having to earn a living. 
when I came through, I was probably on the younger end of that. So it probably wasn't as difficult for me as it was for some of the older players who who weren't able to live at home still and who needed to get a second job to to be able to pay um, the bills and and just to to provide themselves enough um, to to live off. And so I probably wasn't in as bad a situation as a lot of the older players were. And and that's probably where you know they really set the foundation for for us moving the game forward and to get to a position where um, you didn't have to I guess worry about um, paying the bills and, and where your next paycheck will come from. One of the amazing things about women's soccer is that it took off in terms of popularity with the crowds very fast and became hugely a hugely popular sport very quickly. Um, how do you explain that? What do you put that down to? Yeah, I'm not sure. I think, you know, it was probably around the time where a lot of women's sport were starting to invest in their their women's teams. And, um, you know, we, we saw a lot of, especially, you know, the cricket, um, AFLW was coming in. Um, uh, during that time, we were probably successful as well as a national team, which which definitely helps spark the interest within the, within the public space. So, um, I think it was a few things that sort of coincided, um, but you know, it's it was about time that people took note of women's sport and 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 people can enjoy watching the Matildas play. And um, it's it's yeah, it's really nice to be able to to come home and play in front of um, you know a lot of people in the stadiums now, and and everyone's just getting around the team. So it's really exciting time for for women's sport and women's football. Now, tell me this, what kind of an advantage is it to the Matildas to have a home crowd at the World Cup? Yeah, it's massive. I mean, we, we love coming home to play in front of a home stadium and, um, you know, when when games are close and things are looking pretty tough, uh, the crowd can definitely get behind you and push you to that next level. So that's something that we're really excited about and, yeah, it's something that we, we definitely need to, need to take advantage of. Very exciting time. You know you've got a huge audience, huge crowds behind you. Thank you very much indeed, Claire Polkinghorne, for joining us. Thanks very much.